Officer David Anderson didn't expect what he saw as he got closer to the frozen lake. A big truck had crashed through the ice road that the state had made safe for driving every winter. More police cars rushed there, and Officer Anderson soon realized this wasn't just an accident. Someone had purposely damaged the ice road so the truck would fall through. But why? The confusion turned to worry when they found out what was inside the truck. They quickly evacuated everyone from the area. Every year, a section of the main road closed because rare animals hibernated there in winter. To keep traffic moving, they built a special road, grass in summer and icy in winter. Only certain vehicles with ice chains could use it. At first, there were issues, but after five years, it ran smoothly. Until this year, early one morning, a truck crashed through the ice unexpectedly. The driver escaped unharmed. It puzzled everyone because a bigger truck had passed safely the day before. Officer David Anderson investigated. Road workers suspected sabotage. The road should handle that truck. Anderson asked around, but no one saw anything suspicious. He thought maybe the ice had weakened. Why would someone mess with the road used only for freight? It didn't make sense. But as he looked around the road, he began to see some signs he simply couldn't ignore. Close to the crash site were tire tracks and no one could tell him from which car they came. As more incident response teams showed up, Officer Anderson found more and more evidence. A crowbar in the bushes, food wrappers none of the road workers had seen before, and used gloves in the trash. It was almost as if the people who had done this wanted to be found. Officer Anderson bagged everything and took it with him to the lab for DNA testing. He knew it was a long shot. The people who did this probably used the gloves to hold onto the crowbar and eat their food, but maybe a bit of someone's saliva had gotten onto one of the wrappers or someone had left a few hairs behind on the gloves. Officer Anderson knew he had to at least try. Sadly, there was no hit. The people who had done this either were very clean or had never done anything illegal before. Officer Anderson returned to the scene to gather more evidence and determine why the truck had crashed. The crash site was crowded with response teams trying to extract the truck from the water. Before lifting the truck, Anderson needed to know what was inside. The ice was cracked and cargo doors were underwater, so he talked to the driver, who claimed not to know what was in the truck. Anderson then called for help from a crane and diving team. They arrived quickly because Anderson had communicated well with them. While they waited, Anderson made sure safety measures were in place and the equipment was ready. When the crane and divers got there, Anderson supervised them as they prepared to lift the truck. He worked closely with the divers and crane operator to make sure everything went smoothly. As the truck came out of the water, Anderson watched carefully and was ready to change the plan if needed. Anderson's leadership kept everything organized so the divers could work carefully and not cause more damage. He stayed close by to help if they needed it. When the divers were ready, Anderson signaled the crane operator to start lifting the truck safely. Once the truck was out, Anderson planned the next steps making sure the area was secure and well lit for inspection. Anderson gathered a team of experts to check out the truck. He told them about the situation and stressed the importance of being careful. They got their gear ready and approached the truck while Anderson watched. A mechanic opened the cargo hold while a specialist looked inside. They took notes and pictures of what they found. Anderson talked with his team about what to do next, planning a thorough check and thinking about bringing in more experts if they needed them. He also got help from other agencies to make sure they looked at everything carefully. Anderson then secured the area after cutting through the container, prioritizing safety for the investigation team. Anderson and a colleague carefully entered the container through the opening they created using a portable ladder and, mindful of potential hazards inside, Anderson illuminated the contents with a flashlight, inspecting without disturbing anything and documenting the cargo layout and package identifiers. He searched for shipping labels or documents to understand the cargo's origin and destination, relaying initial findings to his team outside via radio. Anderson planned a detailed examination, calling in hazardous materials and forensic specialists while preparing to exit and secure the scene for their arrival. After suiting up in hazmat gear, Anderson re-entered the container, conducting a methodical assessment using a detector to measure for toxic gases and documenting the condition of leaking containers. He relayed findings to the team outside, maintaining calm communication and marking areas of concern before exiting to make way for the hazardous materials team. Anderson quickly told everyone to move away, using loudspeakers to guide them to safety. His team followed his lead, 
making sure everyone stayed clear of the truck. Anderson stayed behind briefly with some officers to mark out a safer area with signs and barriers. He worked closely with the hazmat team, giving them all the details they needed to handle the situation safely. They set up a command center a safe distance away to monitor the situation and stay in touch with the hazmat team and other emergency crews. Anderson organized photos and notes to help the hazmat team when they arrived. He made sure everyone was safe, checking that all team members and bystanders were accounted for. Anderson used a portable speaker to update the crowd, keeping them calm and informed about the emergency response. When the hazmat team arrived, Anderson briefed them and took them to the command center to discuss the situation and plan how to handle the hazardous cargo safely. The hazmat team confirmed dangerous materials in the cargo, so Anderson worked with local police to secure the area further. They gathered evidence and took samples for testing to protect the community and the environment. Anderson met with local leaders and emergency managers to coordinate efforts and reassure the community about safety measures. An investigation into the material's origins was launched, with Anderson collaborating with federal agencies to trace their source. Workshops and training sessions were organized to improve safety measures and emergency response strategies. Anderson remained at the forefront of the ongoing investigation and response, working alongside environmental experts to mitigate potential harm and strengthen community safety. Connections between activists and their network were traced through raids and evidence gathering, leading to key arrests. Anderson participated in community forums, presenting the case facts and advocating for safety and regulatory changes. He worked closely with transportation companies and government agencies to overhaul safety protocols and implement new tracking systems for hazardous materials. Anderson's dedication earned him recognition and invitations to speak at national conferences on transportation safety. He established ongoing workshops for local businesses and schools. On safety and preparedness, emphasizing community involvement in prevention, his commitment to education and preparedness ensured that the lessons learned from the incident would have a lasting impact, contributing to a safer, more informed community. Anderson spent time reviewing the case files, analyzing the steps taken from the emergency response to the investigation's closure. He organized briefings with his team to discuss what was learned and how future responses could be improved. This reflective practice not only enhanced their operational effectiveness, but also fostered a culture of continuous learning and adaptation within his department. To address the ethical questions raised by the case, Anderson initiated a series of workshops on ethics and law enforcement. He invited experts to speak on the moral responsibilities of police officers, creating a space for open dialogue among his colleagues. These discussions helped to reinforce the department's commitment to integrity, accountability, and respect for civil liberties. Understanding the importance of community trust, Anderson expanded his outreach efforts. He organized community meetings to discuss public safety concerns and law enforcement practices. By actively listening and responding to community feedback, Anderson worked to bridge the gap between the police force and the residents they serve, reinforcing his role as a trusted community leader. Recognizing the impact of mentorship, Anderson dedicated more time to mentoring young officers. He shared his experiences and insights, emphasizing the importance of ethical policing and community engagement. His mentorship helped shape a new generation of officers who were well prepared to face the challenges of modern law enforcement with integrity and compassion. As Anderson looked to the future, he continued to explore ways to improve public safety and police community relations. He remained committed to applying the lessons learned from the incident to make lasting changes. His leadership and innovative approaches inspired his team and community members alike, setting the stage for ongoing progress and positive change. Anderson started a program to show responsibility by having officers help clean local parks and protect the environment. This program didn't just help the community, it also let officers connect with people in a friendly way. Anderson also joined local government meetings to support policies that keep people safe and protect the environment. He worked with environmental groups to understand their concerns and find ways police can help without risking safety. Anderson cared about environmental conservation so much that he learned more about laws and policies. He wanted his department to see protecting nature as important for keeping people safe too. Anderson also wanted schools to teach kids about protecting the environment and how police can help. He hoped to make environmental protection part of how police serve and protect their communities in the future.